When the CDC first asked us if we could run a community reception center during a radiation emergency, we were surprised. But they helped start us off with a good foundation. We trained our volunteers and we keep engaged so we're ready, both as leaders and as responders. So that even in a radiation emergency, we can step up and work together to make sure our communities are protected. My name is Sherwin Levinson, and I've served as Executive Director of Georgia's East Metro Health District Medical Reserve Corps since 2007. As a Medical Reserve Corps, or MRC, we are a nonprofit corporation serving the health and emergency preparedness needs of Georgia's Gwinnett, Newton, and Rockdale counties. When I first started, there was little or no awareness about radiation threats and the idea of public health professionals being involved in radiation emergency response was brand new. It was a surprise to our MRC that they would be called on to help with something like a community reception center. We first interacted with CDC in April 2009 when they reached out to us about a training they were hosting on radiation awareness and an intro to community reception centers. During a large-scale radiation emergency, we will need as many trained personnel and responders as we can get to help conduct population monitoring at community reception centers. Medical Reserve Corps, or MRCs, can be an excellent resource for communities to address this need by registering and training local volunteers to support such a response. To demonstrate this, we partnered with the East Metro Health District in the state of Georgia and the local MRC unit. We introduced the concept, provided the initial training, and assisted with an exercise at the local area high school, all in collaboration, of course, with the state radiation control program. The response from the MRC volunteers and the health district leadership was phenomenal. Over the last several years, this health district in Georgia has developed one of the most capable and dedicated volunteer forces in the country for helping their public health system respond to a radiation emergency. CDC did a great job. They provided just-in-time training and the resources we needed to get started. Our state's radiation control program and, of course, our public health district were engaged and participated. During that first CRC experience, everything just magically appeared, and all we as MRC volunteers had to do was participate. But we knew we would eventually be asked to do more. It was good preparation for what was to come. In 2011, the Fukushima power plant accident in Japan occurred. CDC had already planned their Bridging the Gaps conference on radiation emergency preparedness. Suddenly, there was a lot more interest in the topic and a surge in the number of people who wanted to come. We were asked by CDC to help out at the conference with the CRC demonstration, and it gave us an opportunity to increase our familiarity with CRC operations. Because of that experience, we saw the need to be better prepared to take the next step, to be able to plan out and run our own CRC exercise entirely with our volunteers, and to make it really useful at the local level, because that's who would end up having to get this ready in an emergency. By May 2012, we were able to set up our own CRC exercise. We ended up having it in the parking lot of a public health department, and we used a facility that folds up into a trailer, an inflatable drive-through tent. We had to haul it over there, set it up, inflate it, and assemble the equipment within it, which was all very close to what might happen in a real situation. We included our partners, too, and our local public safety folks brought their decontamination trailer. We ran people through the showers after being screened. It all reinforced that training and engagement were critical for our success because they helped build relationships, reduce volunteer fear, and improve our team's competence and cohesion. Having that CRC experience under our belt, it energized us to keep building and maintaining our local response capacity, and if possible, to have that effort play a role in training other groups as well. In the middle of 2017, I decided to contact every one of our members who had been through a radiation emergency training and exercise to be part of a CRC strike force. That would be a team of volunteers who, if requested, would be prepared to help set up a CRC within 24 to 48 hours in another area in our state or a nearby state. 
Activities would include setting up the stations, using both handheld screening devices and portal monitors, and doing the paperwork, just enough to support another group with starting a CRC, and then we'd return home. I had over 30 people who said, yes, I'm willing to make myself available for that, and we've put that momentum to good use. CDC's resources have been a formative influence on us. One of their resources that we've used is the CRC Drill Toolkit. The kit contains a comprehensive set of checklists, guidelines, and evaluation templates. It also includes a set of cards describing the characteristics of the affected population, their symptoms, and various levels of contamination. We use that in our training and exercises. Another great resource was the Shelter Guide, which described preparedness levels across three tiers, basic, better, and best. Things like that have real practical use because you don't know what every person and agency situation will be. I thought that was absolutely outstanding. And over time, these resources have grown organically as we develop our own toolkits and teaching styles. All this ties back to those resources CDC shared with us. While it's important to motivate, register, and train volunteer responders and volunteer radiation professionals, it's equally important that those volunteers are kept engaged and retrained so they're ready to respond in a radiation emergency. The benefits of such a program are manifold. It uses the already existing infrastructure and resources in the community. It helps overcome the typical uneasiness about the subject of radiation among a group of highly motivated community members. And of course, it increases local response capacity where in most cases, none exists. With MRC GEM's ongoing training and our CRC Strike Force, we are creating new ways to keep up that engagement. And that's what I'm passionate about, that we empower our volunteers to rise to that call every month of the year.